So what you're watching now is the last time I saw my Toyota Celica. Um, I decided to sell it. I know it's a shock to me and to a few people, but I no longer own it. Um, either I was going to spend another, you know, maybe $10,000 doing it up to do what I would call a Andy Barker restoration. Um, I just wasn't prepared to do that again. Um, so, the new owner's got it now. I'm sure he's going to have lots of fun. But, time to turn a new leaf in the chapter. And I have a new toy. And it's a new toy in form of a Toyota. Again, yes, I just can't seem to stay away from my Toyotas. They're easy to work on. They're all just a big bunch of metal. And this one may not have the rarity and the appeal of a first gen Celica, but they are a wicked little car. I should have actually taken a video of this while it was outside. I might be able to insert that snippet somewhere. But this is a 1979 Toyota Corolla SE KE55. And it looks like it needs some work. Good thing I'm prepared to do it. Um, apart from this ding here at the front, um, it's actually really straight. I'm very, very surprised with the little amount of bodywork I'm going to have to do. Um, there is rust in the top water tracks here from the roof. I'm going to have to patch that up. The rear wheel guard on this side, looks like it's had some work done to it before. I'm going to have to you know, grind that down and patch that up as well. And last but not least, is a rust spot here, which again is going to require a big piece of steel to get welded in place there. But in saying that, um, the seats are ready to be retrimmed because they can't stay the way that they are, they're a bit ripped. Um, the door trims on all the doors are in exceptional quality still, so um, whether or not I retrim these or not, I'm too, uh, I'm not sure yet, we'll find out, but they're in really, really good condition. Um, the roof liner is excellent so i'm gonna have to take that out and keep it in really 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 good nick but um that's that's a massive thing for me i love having a nice roof liner so that's important um there is no rust in the foot sills or in the foot spaces with passengers drivers in the rear um there's actually a very small amount of rust in this for how it looks at the moment, right now you'd think it would be absolutely a write-off and you wouldn't even consider doing it, but it's definitely saveable. So this is the new project, people. I'm going to start pulling it apart. Um, the engine does run, I just don't have a battery, so I can't start it. Um, knowing that it runs is good, I think I'm just going to rip the engine straight out and start on the bodywork. Um, a little 1.3 litre four cylinder carby is going to sound pretty cool. I am going to keep it as a stock engine, although I'd love to put a big turbo SR20 or something in it. Um, I don't have the money or the time to do that. Plus a little old 1.3 litre putting around would be awesome. Keep the nostalgia side of it alive. So let's start pulling this sucker apart and get straight into the new build. I don't know what I'm going to name this car yet. But, yeah, we'll see as time goes on. Looks like a daisy to me, but I'm sure 10 million of these cars have been called daisy already. Don't know, we'll think about it. Let's start, just before I do start. So it's got all the parts to it. The only thing it doesn't have is the passenger side headlight. So that's fine, I'm gonna get new headlights anyway. Um, the front dash console is in really good condition, so Looking forward to put that in, uh, putting that in. 
Um, the grill is in really good condition as well. That's going to buff up really well. Whether I keep a chrome or not, I'm not sure. Um, it does have a front splitter on it, a fiberglass one. Again, not sure if I'll use it or not. Um, there's the front panel. Um, the dash is definitely going to have to get rebuilt. Um, I might buy a dash cap for that as well. We'll see how uh, how much work's involved. Um, all the pieces like the um, you know the J edges or whatever they're called, these pinch welds, they're all there. Um, the plastics for the trim of the interior are all there and they're in really good shape. There's no broken bits on them. Um, the car's surprisingly in good condition, like I said. Um, a bunch of spare parts here, um, tail lights, rear mirrors, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's all there, it's pretty much a complete car. So let's start pulling the sucker apart and get started. All right, so the first problem I have before I move it is the car is facing the wrong way. I need it turned around so I can get the engine out uh, from that side of the garage. Um, I would start it, but it doesn't have a battery. So let's go get a battery and try and start this thing. The owner said that it did run, so you know, let's give it a go. At least uh, I'll have a battery for it. It's the first piece of the puzzle done, yeah? All right, we are back with a battery. So let's turn the key and see what happens. I have no idea, but we'll, we'll find out. All righty, so we have throttle. Which is good. Let's uh, see what happens. That's a fuel pump. It's not actually, it's not a mechanical fuel pump. It's something that the uh, previous owner has installed. Let's turn the key. Holy moly. It freaking runs. What the heck? All right, let's move this thing out of here and turn it around. <laughs> Well, we're in, we're jacked up nice and safely, and I don't know what to pull off first. Um, I might take a, oh, I don't know, eh? Might take the interior out and put that somewhere safe. And then I might starting on the front panel with the headlights and the horns, and then drain some fluid, get the radiator out, get rid of this battery tray, tidy up all the wires and hoses. Um, and then hopefully get this engine out of here. Obviously disconnect the uh, tail shaft or center shaft. And um, let's just start picking at it, really. A little bit brown, a little bit corroded. Good thing we have a brand new radiator for it. We'll have to flush out the 
this block pretty well. All right, so radiator is disconnected, so let's pull that out now. Now one thing I really appreciate the old owner doing is like he's labelled the bags of all these bolts which is really really helpful because it takes a lot of time to try and you know, work out where these go if you weren't the one to pull them apart and even if you were the one to pull them apart no one's memory is that good so this is a very good idea and I should take some tips. Alright so now that we've disconnected um, the throttle cable, the clutch cable um, a couple of, some of the very minor and simple um, electronics that connect to this engine, which I'm um, over the moon. It's very simple because I hate electronics, I hate wiring. Um, the side is all clear, the front's all clear, this side, um, the clutch cable's been disconnected from the um, clutch arm there. So pretty much the next step is to disconnect the center drive shaft from the back of the gearbox and also just disconnect the exhaust um, hopefully hopefully down the back we're gonna have a look in a minute hopefully this exhaust can be disconnected if not I'm gonna have to literally remove the header um, but we'll see how we go with that so we're making some good progress um, this car is extremely easy to work on so I'm like I'm loving it I thought the Celica was easy to work on but this thing's just another level um, I've disconnected the exhaust right in the middle there. I've taken off the um, the bracket for the uh, the mount for the gearbox, and that's just being held up now with a jack. Um, I'm now going to take the main engine mounts off, or disconnect them anyway, so we can try and get this uh, engine and gearbox and half of the exhaust out in one hit. We'll see how we go, but um, everything so far is not fighting me too bad, which is really really good. Um, disconnected the gear stick um, so that can obviously slide forward through the tunnel um, let's get to kind of just unbolting uh, that bolt there for the mount on this side and then the same on the opposite side and we should be able to jack this up. Now this is the Corolla that came out that did not have a removable upper radiator support beam. So I'm gonna have to lift this right up really high and angle it on quite a big angle to bring it up over the top of this. Um, I really don't wanna cut this, but I'm sure I'll get it out with it the way it is. It's just, I'm being difficult because I don't want to take the exhaust off. We'll see how we go anyway. We'll put you on a time lapse and we'll try and um, get this out in one hit, eh? Fingers crossed. All right, we're doing well, making good progress. That is the lightest gearbox I think I've ever picked up. That is just featherweight, man. Again, really easy to work on. So I've got the engine up on the engine hoist. I now just need to remove the clutch and attach it to my little engine stand. And then this can get pushed away and forgotten about for a little while um, to then get cracking on the bodywork of the Corolla. So. I'm pretty excited that I managed to get that out in one hit and it was relatively painless. So the next big step is going to be things like tidying up all this cables, wiring, brake lines, all that kind of stuff, um, sanding back all the crud off the uh, engine bay, giving us a respray, um, windows out, doors off, 
interior out, uh, cleaning up some of the paint on the bottom of the floor pan, which is in, again, really, really, really good condition. So that's gonna save a lot of hours of hard work, um, unlike the Toyota Celica I had, which was almost six months or a year straight of bodywork. Um, this will not be the same. Uh, apart from this kind of stuff, that rust up on that sill has to go. Um, rust on the wheel arch. I'm sure there's going to be other bits and pieces that I find that need to be worked on, but um, I'm pretty happy with it. This is probably the biggest nugget I've owned. Not as far as bad quality or condition is concerned, but it's just a nugget of a car. It's this little bubble of Toyota goodness. It's great. Progress. Engines out. Most of the, um, the harness, wiring harness, um, the radiator is all out, um, any straps, fuel lines are almost all gone. I still have to take the brake booster off. Um, I'm going to leave those air conditioning lines there and the heater core lines just for now because I might be able to work around them. I might take the rubbers off, clean up a couple of our brake lines here. And we're very close to actually starting the sand down on the engine bay which is going to be a very important part. Um, also, I can clean up the whole front end here and get this all looking schmick, get rid of all the surface rust, which is, thank goodness, it's just surface rust. I'm really, really happy. Um, so I'm just going to pop these fenders off, left and right hand side, and just have a quick look under the wheel guards and see what they're like. So let's get to it. So that's pretty good. Um, Again, it's just some very mild surface rust. Um, the steel on this guard actually looks really good, relatively straight. I think there is a little bit of work that I need to do here, which is not the end of the world. Um, that's gonna be pretty easy to patch up. Um, a little bit of surface rust popping through here. So that might have to be a, uh, a weld panel there as well, but we'll see. Let's get the other one off. I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty much the same story on this one. The steel itself looks really good. Very straight for an old car. Again, same spots. A bit of rust pushing through here where the, uh, I guess, junk and crud and mud and dirt will build up in this, um, behind this piece of metal here. Um, so that's gonna have to be fixed. Again, probably a patch of steel is gonna go in there. I'll probably steal up this area here and here as well, just so it's got a nice new bottom piece. And um, just make this edge flush like the rest of it to the end. So again, not much work involved. But that other panel actually, the first one I took off, on the bumper side of it, so up this end, it has been hit with something very lightly, so I do have to do a little bit of panel beating on that, but that's not too bad. Let's have a look at the actual wheel guards on the chassis. So I have not looked under here yet. Looks like they've got some new springs in this. Interesting. L, so that started with L. Lavelle's springs, all right, cool. Um, this looks pretty good. Oh, I'm loving that there's no rust up under here. This is so relieving. I'll be able to blast all this off and scrape it off and I'll put new um, new Deadna under here as well. Probably not thick Deadna, but just a good coat of high quality paint um, designed for underbody. I think that'll be enough. And um, obviously we'll do rust converter and um, a rust preventative just as a safe measure, but that's really good. Let's have a look at the other side. Okay, so same springs on this side, which is good. That shock looks very shiny. Probably put some new shocks in it anyway. And yet again, really, really good. The frame is super clean and tidy. No rust up through here. Looks like, what's that? I wonder if that's um, factory. Well, maybe not. 
No, there's a, some surface rust under there. That's all right, it's a very small amount though. And it looks like it's just under this weird filler bog stuff, which I've just peeled off, so not too bad. Overall, I'm stoked. I've said that already a million times. Oh, let's keep going, eh? Try and get the rest of this cleaned up and then, I don't know what's next. Whatever else, the boot, the doors, no idea. Let's keep going. So till next time, that'll be on the Duvawaki. This will start to get cleaned up. I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.